Rakesh Junjunwala has made his fame and fortune by calling the markets right. How he's gone with a starting capital of 5000 rupees to a net worth of a few thousand crore rupees is now the stuff of urban legend. One of the big bulls of the stock market Junjunwala is quick to point out that he is bullish first and foremost on India's growth story. For the chartered accountant who bet big with the Madhu Dandavate budget of 1989, this is where it all started. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. We are outside the Bombay Stock Exchange. Right. Do you feel sentimental when you pass by this road? This is Very where you much. started can, your career, what, 20 years ago? I can tell you ago. I started here in 1985. You've been saying hello to a lot I of know, people. Yeah, so I know a lot of people here. Huh. I had no office here. I used to come here with a bag. We used to get a ticket to enter the ring, huh. which I, you know, I could not get the permission. So I used to stand outside the ring and see trading take place. Huh. And that's how I learned. And I remember how I struggled, how I raised money. It's a moment of great happiness. There was a samosa wala here. Ha. Right then we had the garden here earlier. Ha. And we used to eat samosas ha. out here. Lovely samosas to make. But you know, we had a bomb blast in the BSC. Hmm. And I was in the ring on the day of the blast. Hmm. And that poor samosa wala died here. We had 12 exits from the ring. Hmm. And there was such panic after the bomb blast. And I kept shouting because I was afraid of a stampede. That don't worry, if we die, we'll die together. Don't try to save only yourself. Right, and I saw the head of viewing gallery in the BSC ring mm. and the glass broke off and one person's head got cut in the ring. Glass, Very yeah. vivid and, you know, tragic memories of that day. But this street, when I come here, it really reminds me how I used to come here. Everybody saw how Mumbai, how the stock exchange was back on its feet so quickly after the uh, blast. Now, is there, uh, is there something about making money, about trading, about business that is linked to the survival instinct, you think? You know, trading always keeps you on your, fit, on your feet. It makes you alert. So I, that's the, one of the reasons I like to trade. What are these attitudes in life that you've got from, from your profession? First thing I've learned in life is that markets work. Mm. They are the best mechanism to build societies, right? Mm. Then I personally feel... You're philosophical about what you do, isn't it? Yeah, I'm both passionate. I don't know whether I'm philosophical, I'm observant, surely. The India shining story. Are you the face of that story, Rakesh Junjunwala? Well, that's not for me to say. When I entered the market, the index was 150. Mm. Today, the index is 12,000, 80 times, yeah. right? And, you know, I could have gone abroad. I'm a qualified child accountant. I could have practiced. But it's a fact <coughs> that <coughs> a person who started in 1985 in India, in the stock markets, mm. could meet with success, mm. which speaks volumes for the opportunity available here. Today, Every move you make, every investment you make, every stock you put your money on is tracked. There are people who jump onto that bandwagon whether you like it or not. Does that pressurize you? See ma'am, I, I have no clients except my wife because I don't want to be answerable to anybody. Right. With, but with her I have no choice. Does it pressurize you? Like performance anxiety, like if I'm a cricketer or a soccer player and if I start performing well, there is always an expectation that everything I, every time I go out onto the batting field, I will score a hundred. Look at what's happening to Sachin but Tendulkar. Whether anybody is watching or not, I am always paranoid about all my actions. Right? And the likelihood of my action being successful, say five years ago or ten years ago or today, is only better to the extent that what better experience I've had, right? And uh, I don't, I'm, I'm fearless there. I don't think what, I'm not concerned about what people think, I'm concerned with my deeds. So you're, a, you're an icon when it comes to somebody who's successful at the stock market. Are there a lot of bunties and bubblies out there wanting to become Rakesh Junjunwala, you think? I do get a mail from a lot of people hmm. who say they want to invest in markets, they want to follow my career path, what did I do, they want to know. Ordinary investors, retired people, do you think that uh, there is an understanding that they want to be educated what, or they just want to make a quick I, buck? No, I, I find that there is, a, there is a genuine feeling, see markets are about money but markets are also about knowledge, markets are also about egos, markets are also about you know the ability, the, the satisfaction at having been proved right, especially when that right is you know from original thought and not guided by necessarily following somebody. Mm. So I feel the anxiety, the, the curiosity and the anxiousness to learn markets is quite genuine. Mm. But I think markets being markets, the ability is quite limited in my opinion. Greed and fear you've said are two traits that have to be balanced. Yeah. How does one balance them? Give us an anecdote well, now, where, where you had to balance it. Another, it's like this, that suppose I invested in Titan, 
right? <laughs> now I bought X number of shares. Yeah. I was extremely bullish, yeah. right? And I, you know, I would have been greedy if I had put more than say a certain percentage of my wealth into Titan. Right. And I did not de- do it because of fear that Titan may not do well. I might lose my principal. Hmm. So that's how I balance. What yeah. about ACC? Because you sold ACC at a lot less than what it actually went up to. Ma'am, they say markets either don't come to markets or don't regret what you have done. <laughs> right? <laughs> naya gilli, naya dao. I think the second quarter 1991 result hmm. was the best result ACC produced for the next 10 years. Hmm. And after that result came, I sold the shares. Right? I bought them at 300. Within 15 months, I sold at 3,500. Hmm. And the price went to 10,000. I have no regrets about it. You have no regrets, but what principle do you think drove you at that point? Fear or greed? I think none. I, there I was not being greedy, nor was I being fearful. I was being rational. Celebrating three years of the bull run, the Bombay Stock Exchange Index has gone from 3,000 plus to 12,000 plus in just three years. And the bellwether investor who everyone touches for tips or for capital says it's going to stay that way. You know, the index has gone up from 3,000 to 12,000. In three years' in, time. In the last three years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people are excited. It's, everybody's making money. And that's why markets are making headline news, as they say. Teji mein sabka bol wala, mandi mein sabka mukala. Every time the markets run up, uh, people get extremely euphoric and they get very, very nervous, isn't it? And you're the guy who they run to to defend uh, the bull run. There's no question of defending the bull run. <laughs> See, we forget that after all, what are markets? Markets reflect economic truth and fundamentals. Mm. And I think, I believe India is going into a period of unprecedented economic growth. I think markets are only recognizing that. Why is it so difficult to believe because what I, you're saying? Why is there this fear psychosis almost I, I think that for, if things are good, they're bound to go bad? I think for two reasons. Past experience and the inertia of the mind that India can have continued economic growth and also, I think we had two scams in the stock market. This has also made yeah, people very suspicious yeah. of markets. Yeah. I think it's a combination of reasons. Are you saying that we should not be suspicious at all this time round? Well, I don't say that we should not be. I don't think they need to be suspicious. Always, Although, I think they need to be alert. And I don't think they need to have alertness. I don't think there are any scams in the markets. Now, in the past, the secondary market where we have seen these two scams happen, the primary markets have been a safer place for retail investors. Right. Now, it looks like the primary markets are also uh, suspect, isn't it? Let us understand one thing, that, you know, the misuse of mechanisms is part of all markets. Mm. All markets <laughs> have to evolve. So, therefore, we have to go through a stage of evolution where, you know, people are going to take advantage of the law, but the law will catch up. Right. Mm. You always defended the regulator very strongly, saying that the regulator is in place and the regulator's systems and processes are just fine. See, Do you still may, stand by that? See, we may be critical of some mistakes the regulators might have made. But we should realize that we, in the Indian stock markets, we have gone from the wild west to being one of the most modernized trading systems in the world. And in a very short in span a very of short time. Of time. Yeah. And you know, even all regulation has to evolve. And mistakes are going to be made during the process of evolution. So I think it's a matter of being a glass half full or half empty. Ironically, while Junjunwala has all the trappings of success, he still clings to his middle class South Mumbai roots. Proud to be a self-made man, he can't help spouting Junjunwala-isms. What I want to know is how important is it for you that people are always guessing how much you're worth. It's important, isn't it, that people don't really know. What irritates me is, how does it matter to me? Hmm. And, uh, see, I'm not running any relay race. And I'm not in any rat race with somebody that I want to be richer than somebody or I want to be the richest man. My purpose in life is to do what I enjoy and enjoy what I do. Hmm. Right? And wealth is a byproduct. Of what you do. Of what I do. Yeah. And therefore, why, why is it, uh, you know, what is, what is the importance for people to know what my wealth is? How is it relevant? Maybe only because your claim to fame is the money you've made on your own, first generation, from no, scratch, I from I, I, starting I, with 5,000 rupees. I, what is more needed to be appreciated is not the wealth I had as much, but how you made it. How I made it, right? By God's grace, I am a rich man. How rich, how important? Why, how is it important? I can tell you one thing. I am rich enough even for my will to matter internationally. You just mentioned that you are not in a rat race. 
how do you react when you see these lists that come out? Um, hundred richest men in the world, hundred richest Indians, fifty most powerful Indians. Because you figured in some, haven't you? Well, see, ma'am, I have no press agent and I have no press agency, right? And I am not seeking any publicity. But as long as any list is a recognition of human effort and human achievement, right? And I mean, I would be lying to say that I don't like it, like to be on that list. Mm -hmm. So surely I would like to be there, but I am making no special efforts to be on any list. Right. Being on that list is coincidental and not the purpose of my work. Right. So obviously there is no ambition, therefore, to be on another list and a higher number on any list. Not at all. You have often. Uh, and emphatically pointed out that there is a lot of research, there is a lot of data gathering, there is a lot of knowledge accumulation that goes into this, you know, this business of yours. What do you read? See, I read The Economist and The India Today. India Today, I read cover to cover every week. The Economist, I read the entire business section, then the science, technology and the opportunity section. Right? These are my readings constantly. And I read broker reports, go through results. Read balance sheets. There are four screens there, five screens. You want to just quickly, briefly tell us which one does what? Well, these are all the uh, BSC NSC live screens. Right. Where I, you know, I track the prices. Right. Right. So this, the first one here on the left, these is your portfolio. Is my investment. Right. These are the futures. There are thirty-one uh, scripts there. Yeah. Okay. Except sale, I think all of them are my investment. The last one. Okay. These are all some shares in which I have some sh short term positions right and these are the sh or you know just uh, just some company whose prices i want to follow right these are the futures hmm. what i trade hmm. right this is the live reuters screen where i get information and some other markets and prices i follow many news and this is the internet right so this is is this and there i have a television right can you go through a single day without having if you want to conversations with anybody outside there are certain people in whose views I value, no, no, some no, friends no. who I discuss matters. So I talk to them. And essentially, see, in decisions in investing and trading are very lonely decisions. And I can of course trade without talking to anybody, but I tend to tend to talk to people. Yeah. Now I have spoken to some people who've said that you know, there is this contradiction in Rakesh Junjunwala. There is this long term view he has on some uh, on shares and he stays and he stays and he stays. Right. Hangs in there right. tight. Right. And here on this screen, uh. on his trading screen, he can win and you know he can make and lose what 20 crores, 50 crores in, in a blink. As we talk, can you do that? Well, I do not do that kind of trading. <laughs> right. And uh, you know ma'am, why do I hold investments for long term? Because mm. I've realized I read somewhere, mm. and time has taught me that we should be greedy but long term greedy. Mm. Mm. Right? And when you have a good investment, when you have something good, stick it, stick to it. What about the other screen? Ma'am, I had no capital when I came to the markets, and mm. no father gives and no father in law gives. Mm. Right? So I had to earn the capital to <laughs> invest. How do you invest if you have the capital? Mm. And I get the capital by doing all this future trading. Mm. And you can lose and make up to how much in, in a single, it, as we are talking? I don't, uh, I mean, I would not like to quote figures, but mm. I mean, we make and lose, I mean, I say, I told you, no, I'm not afraid to make a mistake. Is there a Only I make mistakes which I can afford, so I can live to make another one. You get in actually before the trend starts, isn't it? For the I, investment decisions. By God's grace, I think from 85, 86 to 2006, I've been able to catch most I say, except if there have been 10 cycles in the market, I've been able to catch a nine right. So investment wise, <laughs> the cycles have been good. <laughs> Trading, we make mistakes every day. Mm. You know, George Soros has said beautifully that it's not important that you're right or wrong in trading. Mm. It's more important how much you lose when you're wrong and how much you make mm. when you're right. If you lose money, do you feel very stressed? Never. Never? Never. And never. You feel it, I feel it for five minutes. Because well, ma'am, we are not, I am not staking more than 2-3% of my wealth in any, right? And see, as I always remember Churchill's word, you know, lose many a battle to win a war. Churchill you've quoted from, you quote very regularly. Now the thing is, do you read anything else these people have written? The non-investing legends. 
But Churchill was not an investing legend at all. Exactly. So and these people, do you read beyond the quotes that have come into books, outside the markets? Do yeah, you have any other inspirations? I am very much fascinated by the Second World War. Huh. And I have seen so many movies on the Second World War. I saw, a, I saw 25 CDs, CDs on the war. Okay. And you know that is that gives you a lot of quotes. Now my reading is you know very much Curtain. below the uh, much lesser than what non-market reading <coughs> or non-economic <coughs> reading. Mm -hmm. But when I was a child, or say until I was 35, I was a voracious reader. Junjunwala has his eyes clearly on the future. Today, besides his family, he's passionate about his causes, from a children's home to a think tank to review the state's welfare efforts. Even by international standards, you have good wealth is what you've said. Yeah. Does that mean that you're ready to trade and to invest in international markets? What is stopping you? Is it legality no, or is it scale? It, it, no, first, there are two, three reasons, man. The first reason, first of all, is even if I desire, I cannot do it because all my wealth is in India. Hmm. And the Reserve Bank of India, the government of yeah, India doesn't so legalities. allow there are, legalities. Yeah. But I see by 2010, we will have capital from government. Right? That's my guess, right? Second, I think the opportunity in India itself is so huge hmm. and so nascent. Hmm. You know, we're getting good food at home, why think of a restaurant? Fair enough. Right? Third part, point is scale. that to invest internationally, scale, and also, I need to build a bigger and broader organization. Which you're in the process of, of doing. doing. So, I think I'll have all the three by 2010. So, by 2010, then international markets? Yeah, I want to. Hold on. Yeah, I want to go to the international market. Also. But in terms of the capital, you want, need to invest to be considered of a, a, a notable investor no, in the international I don't market. Want to, I don't want to go to, a, to any market to be noted. I want to go to a market to make money. So, <laughs> capital is not a limitation. I have learned in life, capital is never a limitation. You work with money in a sense, okay, to put it very simplistically. Where do you save your money? Where do you save my money? Is I save whatever I earn less my expenses, my savings. By, Away but, from the stock markets, is there any other uh, areas where, where would you save your money? Art, real estate? I have no, I don't have, I just bought one painting last <laughs> month. Apart from that, I have no art of any. No art really, and I have no real. I have a house in Lonavala, this office. Apart from this, I don't own any real estate. I invest in some real estate funds. Hmm. Right? So, so what is a saving for Akesh Junjunwal? I'm trying to make you know, saving relate to is you the value of the value. My wealth is the value of my portfolio. That's my savings. Can that be notional also? Because today, depending on the markets, it's X, tomorrow it it's goes not down. It's notional. I would not use the word notional. I will say it's fluctuating. Okay. But it fluctuates within a band. That is important, uh -huh. that it is within a van. But doesn't it bother you sometimes that you are not the guy with the ideas, you are the guy who is backing the guys with the ideas? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> see, there are various parts of, of creating anything or building anything. So when I invest in a company at the initial stage, I am helping mm -hmm. build that company. I distinguish between my chairmanship of Aptec and my directorship of other companies. In Aptec, we are under management control of the company. Exactly. So we are exactly running it. And the other companies have just What is that experience like? Because for you, it's a new experience, isn't it? Yeah, it's a challenge, ma'am. You know, I, I don't know whether I'll be successful or not. And I will know only in five years. But I love a challenge. Funds worldwide have made billions of dollars by taking over management control of companies. Now, I had never taken management control of any company prior to Aptec. Right. And the jury is still out whether we will succeed mm -hmm. or not. And I think it will take four to five years. I think I still come to that year 2010, right? It's 2010 is yeah, the I'll year 50, when a I'll lot of things will I'll happen 50, to I'll Rakesh Junjunwala. I will be 50 that year. So, so you're I, a I man will, who sets, my, sets these milestones, no, huh? that I'm by not, 50 but I have all, to but do I, this. But they are, no, I, I never said that, they are very flexible milestones. <laughs> you know, in a stock market, people come on CNBC and give targets. I, I man may humanly think of targets, but they are all flexible. If I succeed in man, in reviving Aptek and making it a very good uh, company, if very profitable company, then I'll have the courage to buy the management control of far larger companies. You know, we talked in the morning when we were outside the BSC mm. about um, how every time the markets are on a bull run and when, you know, the Sensex keeps climbing, um, there is great excitement and there's also fear. Now, does it bother you that people like you are scrutinized very intensely at that time? 
मैम आई एम आई एम कंसर्न अबाउट वन थिंग आई फॉलो द लॉ इन लेटर इन स्पिरिट राइट एंड वी लिव इन अ डेमोक्रेसी गवर्नमेंट देर आर इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड लॉ सेट राइट आई एक्ट इन अकॉर्डिंग विद दो लॉ इन द इंस्टीट्यूशन नो इफ द गवर्नमेंट हैज द राइट और द अथॉरिटीज हैज द राइट टू एग्जामिन एवरीथिंग सो वेदर वी लाइक इट और नॉट वी हैव टू एक्सेप्ट इट एंड दैट्स पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ I but don't this, but this suspicion, this suspicion that that sort of comes up every time these issues happen, and even otherwise, given the business that you're in, does that bother you? Not at all. I'll tell you, I'm going to. But it's something that you recognize. See, I, whatever I've done in life, people have looked at it suspicion. Imagine a child born in 1985, coming from a bureaucratic family, going to the street, a stock market, and standing on the streets. Right, I mean, people would be, will feel it's quite incredulous. My father is a member of Lingnan Club from 1973. I am a qualified chartered accountant. Right, I am a professionally qualified person. Right, I don't think culturally I have done anything wrong. Then they don't want to make me a member of the Lingnan Club. It's their choice. Initially, I used to react to this with anger. Now I see, I say I react to it with maturity. That it's it's a matter. you know pe- people may have any opinion time will change their opinion is there a sense that if you have made your money as a trader in the stock markets as an investor in the stock markets somehow it's not as respectable as let's say the captains of industry does that bother you somewhere because you are putting in huge amounts of education and knowledge to make the kind of investments that you're making but ma'am let me tell you one thing and here let me be very candid for the kind of recognition i have got hmm. right i don't think it's not respected it's now not respected in antique minds right if capitalism is the only method of government of or, or of government then the only temples of that of that form of government it's is its is the stock market hmm. right and ma'am believe me i am not doing anything to be recognized by anybody the recognition is incident But I am doing what I enjoy and what I want to do. Rakesh, but it bothers you enough today for you to remember an incident of Willingdon Club not giving you membership. No, but I'm, it, it, ma'am, that may that maybe was ten, twelve years ago. I might have felt a little pinch or date. I know I don't feel it. From a traditional Marwadi family, Junjunwala chooses to live with his parents. Without their support, he's clear he wouldn't have managed to get so far. Today, he's passionate about his wife, his daughter, and his life. his sisters and family the only people to benefit from his stock tips my dad is a very is person who has taught me the most in life and i think he is whatever i am in life he has a very substantial contribution in it and we have diametrically opposite views in life but he has taught me four golden words he's the most democratic father we agree to disagree he i had a curiosity and he nurtured that curiosity so you are not a mummy's boy you are a daddy's boy so no, i am both mummy and daddy's boy <laughs> i am the baby of the family i'm 46 <laughs> and you know the younger tend to be both youngest yeah yeah i live with my parents and we 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 very close knit family you have a daughter mishtha yeah i remember you hearing you say that you have several challenges in front of you the first challenge is to be able to look after your health i e cut down on drinking and cut down on smoking so that you can spend minimum 35 years with your daughter nishtha how are you doing on that challenge <coughs> well i'm just starting to work on it oh, oh i what what i'm quoting is something i heard 2 years ago and you're still trying to work on it rakesh junjunwala it's, it's better late than never You're still trying to work on yeah, it. Yeah, I and I will eventually. But you know, you're talking about 2010. You're talking about Nishtha. You're talking about parents who you know helped support you in this career choice when you made it, and who you live with out of choice today. Surely it bothers them that you're not uh, dealing with this challenge up front and with the kind of. Uh, um you know effort that it's needed well, what do you have to say to them well i have no face to face them let me tell you and but you know uh, anurag and i i have lost a battle but i have not lost the war 
Okay, Rakesh Junjunwala, on one of those stock quotes, I'm going to wish you all the very Thank best you. in this battle. And I hope that the markets continue to rise and nobody pays a price for it. Well, that's a hope which may not be very, very legitimate because <laughs> in markets, some are going to make, some are going to lose. My hope would be that let India's economy prosper. Let all Indians have at least basic needs. And let us build a society which is egalitarian where we allow people's skills to flow and develop.